Hello, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our next installment of the warranty webinar. Uh, I'm Samantha Horton. I'm a senior business analyst at Tavant and here with our uh, host and guest, Eric Arnum, uh, today to talk about warranty and service in the automotive industry. Uh, we're going to look at some trends we're seeing um, along with those warranty and service numbers um, and also the unavoidable electric vehicle and its uh, potential when we talk about the service life cycle of the vehicle. Uh, so thank you for coming and I hope you enjoy this webinar. Um, over to you, Eric. Thank you very much, Sam. And uh, thanks to all of you for attending this uh, webinar, the last Friday of the month. Um, looking forward to the weekend. Um, just a little bit about Warranty Week. If you are not a subscriber, I welcome you to become one. It's a free publication, thanks to sponsors such as Tavant. Uh, so uh, it's, it's free to the end user reader, so you're welcome to sign up. It comes out every Thursday. So we actually had one come out uh, just last night. Um, and uh, the, the data that I'm going to present to you is uh, straight from the pages of Warranty Week, so um, you can uh, go back and look at the back issues to uh, catch up on uh, any of the trends that I talk about here. So let's let's kick this off. Uh, we're looking here at the uh, quarterly total for claims paid by US-based automotive manufacturers. Um, there's uh, 20 quarters of data on here, five years of course, 2016 to 2020 and these are all in uh, millions of uh, US dollars. So um, although it doesn't look, um, uh, it, although it doesn't look steady, it is relatively steady as I'll, I'll show you in the uh, pages of head, pages ahead. Um, first of all, we'll kick it off with uh, looking at the claims paid by these manufacturers. Last year, they paid $12.5 billion in warranty claims that was down around 5% from 2019 when they paid about uh, 13 point uh, 2 billion dollars so that's that's all the um, automotive all the land-based vehicle all the suppliers all the trucks buses cars mopeds motorcycles um, you name it all the uh, motorized vehicles and their suppliers uh, based in the US so this does not include companies like Toyota or uh, Fiat or BMW uh, they are international companies they deal with different currencies it's very hard to include them in the same chart as all the American companies uh, which are reporting their uh, warranty expenses in dollars let's go to the next slide here what I've done is I've just simply separated out the uh, vehicle manufacturers also known as the OEMs if you like uh, from their suppliers and you see that there's an approximate 9 to 1 ratio between the uh, OEMs and their suppliers uh, last year the OEMs paid 10.7 billion dollars in warranty claims that was down around 6% and the suppliers paid around 1.77 billion dollars that was down around four percent from 2019 levels but what i want to point out to you here is you see that notch in the second quarter of 2020 that's the pandemic that's the lockdowns that's when everything stopped about a year ago you know in in uh, i guess it was uh, late march but it really you know came into force in uh, April and May and into June that was the second quarter of 2020 that was the worst of it that was the worst of the lockdowns the the uh, the depression in uh, economic activities people were not allowed to leave the house I mean if you if, if you can't go shopping how are you going to uh, uh, you know bring your vehicle in for warranty work so you know that's the explanation as to what's that notch doing there Let's go to the next slide. What I'm doing here is still the same numbers. I've just I've I've taken the data that you saw before, and now I have it in four different categories. Uh, the darkest blue is the cars and small vehicles. Uh, then there's a, a brighter blue that's the trucks, the buses, the large vehicles, including uh, construction equipment, including uh, you know cranes and uh, 
uh, heavy equipment and all the vehicles that are used off-road uh, the farm vehicles, uh, the um, mining vehicles, uh, you, you know, what, whatever it is. If it's bigger than a pickup truck, it's in there with the uh, trucks and large vehicles. And then the uh, third uh, category, what I've done here is I've uh, separated the suppliers into two different kinds of suppliers. There are the powertrain suppliers who are making the engines and the transmissions and the axles and you know things like that and then there are the are the uh, other parts suppliers that's you know everything from brakes to uh, glass and interiors uh, the seating the carpeting uh, the dashboards uh, the tail lights the headlights uh, you you know you name it uh, you know whatever these companies are sourcing from uh, other companies and oh by the way I should mention this all of these numbers are net numbers so in other words if um, a supplier uh, pays a claim to GM or Ford and then Ford or GM pays that money to the dealer these are all net amounts so it's uh, expenses minus reimbursements so that's very important to remember so here we're looking at claims uh, the cars in 2020 uh, they spent 7.5 billion dollars on claims that was down around 8% from uh, 2019 uh, the truck and large vehicle companies they spent around 3.2 billion dollars that was actually up 1% that's 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 like the first metric that increased in 2020 um, but they were up by 1% the powertrain companies they spent 1.05 billion dollars on claims that was down two percent and then the other manufacturers the other suppliers 722 million dollars that was down around seven percent uh, if you need any of these numbers from these uh, uh, charts uh, either ask Tavant or ask me I'd be glad to furnish them to you uh, let's let's go on to the next slide if we could um, what we've done here is we've taken all of those dollar amounts and divided them by the corresponding sales figures to figure out not how many dollars were spent but what was the percentage of sales that's going towards warranty and what you see here is uh, well you see that big hump at the top there that's the car manufacturers you saw that notch before so what happened is you know you 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 take the amount of claims divided by the sales so when the amount of claims um, falls or no no I'm sorry I'm getting confused here you have the amount of claims divided by the amount of sales so when the amount of sales falls the percentage goes up in and of itself and that's what happened in the second quarter of 2020 uh, in that second quarter the cars and small vehicle manufacturers their claims rate shot up to four percent that's very high it's very unusual it hasn't happened since 2009 and guess what that was the year of the Great Recession uh, the truck manufacturers they've been seeing more of a steady rise in their claims rate they ended uh, 2020 at two and a half percent 2.5 is where they ended uh, the powertrain companies uh, they 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 had a bit of a rise in the second quarter as well you see that little hump in their data they rose to 1.4 percent in that uh, second quarter of 2020 and then the others uh, all of the uh, other suppliers the bottom most line on this chart little hard to see but something very strange happened to them in the second quarter they dropped from their historical average of around uh, 0.5 percent they dropped to 0.3 percent in the second quarter I have no idea why but you know there there's there's the data right in front of us uh, let's let's move on if we could to the next slide now I should have explained this but uh, the claims are the amounts of money that these companies are paying to dealers and to customers and to uh, repair organizations the accruals 
that's the amount of money they set aside. It's sort of like uh, deposits and withdrawals in a checking account. The claims are the withdrawals, the accruals are the deposits. So you, you put your paycheck into the uh, checking account and then you pay your bills with it. So consider this to be um, the deposits, the additions, the, uh, the money that you put in to finance those expenses. And, you know, e even from across the room, you could look at this chart and you could say, well, I see two things that really stick out at me. One is there's a big notch in the second quarter. And the other is uh, the, what happened in the fourth quarter. You know, that, that really spiked up there. Uh, something must have gone very, very wrong. And I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But, um, yeah, um, the fourth quarter, the accruals in the, in the U.S.-based automotive industry, they almost they came within that much of touching $5 billion. Uh, $4.93 billion is what they hit. And for the year as a whole, warranty accruals were up 7% to $12.8 billion, just under $13 billion. Um, let's go to the next slide. You see that the culprit was the vehicles. Uh, you know, the suppliers are more or less steady. They're still, you know, um, steady. And, and let's go to the next slide if we could. More specifically, you see that it was the cars. The cars and the small vehicles caused both the second quarter plummet and the fourth quarter spike. It wasn't the trucks, it wasn't the powertrain, it wasn't their suppliers. It was the car manufacturers, that's Ford, GM, and Tesla. Uh, we don't count Fiat, Chrysler here because they're based in Europe. But and we don't count Toyota or Hyundai or BMW or any of the others who who do have factories in the U.S. Uh, but again, they're based in other countries. So let's go a little deeper into this these numbers here for the cars. For the year as a whole, 2020, 8.23 billion dollars in accruals. That was up 21 percent. That's amazing. Uh, the truck manufacturers just under three billion dollars that was down 12 percent for the year as a whole the powertrain companies 890 million dollars that was down 11 percent and the other suppliers 718 million dollars for the year that was down seven percent and as i mentioned the total for everybody was 12.83 billion dollars in warranty accruals that was up seven percent Let's go on to the next slide if we could. Same thing, we're looking at the accrual rates here. We take the accruals divided by sales and we come up with a percentage and that represents the percentage of product revenue that is going towards warranty expenses. You see for the car companies, a steady rise to 3.1% by the end of the year. The truck companies up and down, but they ended the year at 2.3%. Uh, the powertrain companies, they were pretty steady at 1%, give or take. And the others were also pretty steady last year at 0.5%. Now, you see that hump in 2018 in the uh, powertrain companies. Um, I'll tell you, that was uh, Cummins, uh, an engine supplier, a truck diesel engine supplier but you know I'm, I'm sort of getting ahead of myself let's go to the next slide what we're looking at here is just the five-year record of just one company Ford Motor Company um, I should have said this earlier but I'll say it now I said that the problem was the car companies well more specifically the problem was Ford Ford had a tough year last year. Besides the pandemic, they also had rising warranty expense rates. You can see the green line, that's accruals. It just steady rising, actually it is steady rising from 2016, 2017. It goes up a little bit every quarter until, uh, you know, what you see here. Uh, with the claims rate, you see that hump in the second quarter. That again, that's, that's the mark of the recession. But um, at least, you know, it stopped going up. I guess that's the good news. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, Vistian is um, 
it used to be part of Ford. It's a spin-off of Ford. But what you see here is, you know, they had a tough 2016, 2017. Then they got a bit back to normal. Uh, they also had a spike in 2020. Uh, it's as if, you know, the suppliers are coupled to the OEMs. And when the OEM is having a tough year, the supplier has a tough year. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, Packard. It's a big truck company. Uh, they own a couple of brands. Uh, uh, Kenworth, uh, Peterbilt, uh, DAF, uh, there must be some others I'm forgetting uh, in Europe and elsewhere. But yeah, I mean, you don't need a PhD in statistics to see that there's something going wrong in 2020 for this company. Uh, and it's not all just, you know, sales drying up. There's also some problems with the uh, warranty expenses rising. Next one, please. Cummins. Uh, you can see they had a terrible 2018. Their diesel engines, um, uh, they weren't passing emissions tests in California and elsewhere. And, you know, you have to fix that. You have to pay the customer. You have to pay the repair organization, so on and so forth. And so what you see is that in 2018, they uh, their accruals went through the roof. That's the money you set aside and then the red line starts going up that's the money that you spend so first you make the deposit then you make the withdrawals um, you can see that things are starting to get back to normal for them let's move on to the next one Allison transmission again bad 2020 uh, but it was bad with claims not accruals that's important to note because the warranty accruals that's what you expect to spend in the future. Warranty claims is what you spend now. Or here, you know, in the second quarter, that horrible second quarter where, you know, the pandemic was raging, the lockdowns were everywhere. It was hard for both customers and workers to get out of the house. And then one more I have to show you. Uh, next slide, please. Dana. This is one of the top suppliers. Uh, they had a terrible 2020. That's the story for everybody. Uh, you can see it plain as day in front of your face. Um, when those lines spike like that, people are in trouble. So I'll stop there and I'll hand it over to uh, Samantha. Uh, take it away, please. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Uh, some interesting numbers for sure. Uh, I appreciate that breakdown. I think that'll be a good lead right into uh, what we want to talk about as far as connecting warranty and service in the automotive industry, uh, the benefits they can have when that happens, um, and how we can help those numbers look a little better in the future, hopefully. Okay, so here we have um, some more uh, numbers. I think these uh, we're producing more of a, a challenge uh, for these numbers for OEMs and suppliers as well. Uh, that first slide there showing you um, that suppliers are currently only paying about 10% uh, of what they're actually responsible for instead of uh, their fair share of actual 37%. Uh, that's a huge reduction for OEMs and a huge loss um, in their pocketbooks. So I think uh, that's something we can, can look at and help remedy with uh, the Tavant solution. Um, Another scary fact is just the 26 billion being paid out in claims and manufacturers. Uh, again, this is something I think with some analytics um, and a little bit of utilizing the, the new technology and um, information coming from the new vehicles uh, can really help uh, reduce. Uh, so we'll look at how that's possible as well. Uh, and then that final uh, point at the end there are unavoidable electric vehicles. Uh, so OEMs, the major OEMs, have all really released recently their, their drive to go to completely electric vehicles in the next four to six years. Uh, that's gonna be a huge shift, I think, um, not just for the OEMs as, uh, as the dealers uh, and uh, their customers um, and how they manage uh, that change is really important as well. Um, also, just a quick point um, on that electric vehicle change. Uh, something I think we should also be looking at is how we can help um, dealers and OEMs manage those changes with the electric vehicles coming in uh, using a, a solution that will en enable the dealer 
to have higher fix, uh, first time fix rates, um, as well as potentially using AR and VR technologies uh, to maintain technician certifications. Uh, so they don't have to travel, they can do this virtually um, within the dealership. Also, um, how they can use uh, AR, VR, or even gamification, uh, creating um, games to help educate customers on these new technologies. Uh, so you get a vehicle today and it's, um, it's pretty standard, it, you know, it drives, uh, maybe there's some infotainment features, but going forward with the aut autonomous features um, and subscriptions, there's going to take a lot of education to the customers to really keep them uh, updated on all their vehicle can do uh, going forward. Uh, so the next slide, we're going to look at some Tavant solutions and how we're actually, you know, uh, supplying a solution to the entire uh, supply chain within automotive. Uh, we're looking at uh, capturing the entire process and helping um, bring all of the uh, data that's available from the supplier to the OEM, from the dealer and customer as well together uh, to create solutions and, and easier processes for all involved. Uh, we use integrations and community portals uh, to make sure that each user involved in the supply chain um, has the information required to be successful. Uh, we use modules like registration and claims to help manage warranty contracts uh, between the OEM and the dealer. And then we also have supplier recovery uh, modules to manage the contracts that are, um, you know, between the supplier and OEMs. Uh, we also have a parts return module that allow uh, suppliers and OEMs to get those uh, failed parts back faster so they can get them in and inspect those and get those issues um, resolved quicker. And we also have an AI ML uh, platform that's being implemented throughout the entire process uh, to be able to, um, you know, monitor these issues that are coming in without someone actually having to run reports on a daily basis, validate the data, um, just transform the data for the different purposes and reports. Um, and that's all being done automatically now and also triggering uh, actions based on that data automatically for the users. Uh, so our next slide is just a little bit more detail on the 360 view that Tavant brings with all of these modules um, for the supply chain. So um, looking through a combination of all of our product offerings that uh, when brought together really help the entire after sales process uh, to be more successful. Um, along with our pre-built standard uh, modules that we just mentioned, uh, Tavon's value also brings uh, 20 plus years of warranty experience where we help our customers understand the best practices that, that we're aware of and that we're researching and then helping them to implement them into their own business and processes. Uh, practices that'll help you know, the OEMs and dealers to really be able to manage those new trends with electric vehicles and you know, new trends of customer expectations of contactless experiences, whether that's purchasing parts or uh, getting service done on your new electric vehicle. Uh, so we're looking at features uh, that better um, manage the service appointment scheduling, uh, technician training and monitoring, uh, as well as quality management and work order management. Um, there's also uh, the biggest piece I think right now that everyone's looking at is service intelligence, uh, where we're putting specifically a lot of resources into Vaughn to understand the uh, data that's available now from this new vehicle technology and understanding the types of actions and decisions that can be um, brought in to the process automatically without manual intervention. Uh, so um, when multiple issues are being uh, found on a specific vehicle or model type, uh, the system automatically gathers that data, sends out an, uh, a notification or record of a uh, quality issue to the quality team to really help drive um, improved quality as well as a better customer experience. Uh, so this is just like I said, a, a high overview of what Tavant offers and, and brings to the table for warranty as well as service. Um, you'll see, I think, uh, a lot of improvement when you bring all of these together um, and, and combine the process instead of having these silos that we typically see uh, when we first come into our customer office. Um, so thanks. Uh, that was a, a quick run through of what we brought for today's um, webinar. Um, any additional thoughts or, or questions, Eric? 
Uh, we have one question coming in. Um, how how do you think the pandemic affected um, the the uh, automotive industry compared to other uh, industries? Um, I don't have a complete answer for this yet. Um, I'm still in the midst of uh, sorting through all the industries, but I will tell you that um, it seems to have hit the automotive and, and, and more specifically the, uh, the car and small vehicle portion of the um, automotive industry the hardest. It does not seem to have had as much of an effect on appliances. Uh, it does not seem to have as much of an effect on the computer industry and um, rather unexpectedly it seems to have had a positive effect on the home building industry so that that's that's not something I would have predicted a year ago uh, as Samantha said though in the in the uh, automotive industry uh, the pandemic had a you know massive effect on the ability to perform warranty work uh, first you have to bring the vehicle in and second of all you know you have to have a worker there able to fix it uh, what I've seen, and I, I, I can't prove this yet, but I, I've seen it in the, in the data, is what seems to have happened is that people just simply postponed from the spring to the summer, from the summer to the fall, you know, from the early part of the year to the later part of the year. And that seems to be what happened uh, with things like construction projects being shut. You know, that's no problem. We'll fix it later. We'll fix it, you know, a couple of months from now. Uh, that's that's different from some other industries like uh, well I mean there's no warranties in the restaurant industry but um, what happened to the restaurant industry is nobody went out to eat and those meals were not postponed they were just simply done other ways so there's no comeback for something like the restaurant industry in that the meals that you didn't buy at the restaurant you know they aren't just simply postponed till next year or something like that but with a car purchase with a you know upgrade of a truck or something like that it's very easy to postpone that so I think that's generally what we've seen is uh, a time shift from the second quarter to the fourth quarter uh, let's see um, we have another question um, uh, this seems to be for you Sam um, how are you using artificial intelligence within warranty administration? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, we have a lot of use cases. Um, a few that specifically come to mind would be our natural language processing. Uh, so what happens when a dealer is entering a claim, uh, typically the challenges are uh, the information he gives. Uh, if you give him a pick list, uh, generally, we find that they just grab the quickest, easiest one and, and not always the correct answer to that failure code or quality um, you know, pick list item that they should be selecting. So what we do is we take their descriptions of that complaint cause correction information and we use text analytics to, to derive the specific quality codes that should be selected. Uh, just you know, creating better uh, more true data for the OEMs to gather and use um, for quality processing. And then another would be our, um, our failure clusters. Uh, so we had a customer specifically come to us and say, hey, we know we have a lot of um, repetitive issues. How, how can we better utilize this, this analytic platform to manage those and be aware of them ahead of time um, rather than catching up on the back end and then putting out a recall? Uh, so the system is looking at all of these claims as they come in real time. It's uh, looking and filtering out for specific models, and it's also looking for uh, repeat failure types. Uh, as they get clustered together and they get to a certain level, uh, notifications get sent out and their quality team starts looking at them before it becomes a massive issue. Thank you, Sam. Um, so there's there's no more questions coming in to the chat. Uh, we have a couple of seconds. If there's anything on your minds, uh, please put it into the chat. Um, otherwise, you see our contact information here on the screen. Please send us an email or give us a phone call. Um, so I, I guess I'll I'll say there's there's no more questions, Sam. Let me hand it back to you for a thank you and goodbye. Absolutely. 
Uh, thanks. This is my first uh, warranty webinar. I'm glad to be a proud of it. Um, automotive is a huge passion for me, so I'm sure that's why they asked me to be a part of this one. I'm glad to have done it. hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, and if you have any questions, like Eric said, please feel free to reach out. Thanks. Bye-bye.